I already know you're exhausted, so I'm gonna cut to the chase. In this video, I'm going to be sharing seven nighttime puppy tips that are going to help you get more sleep. And these are gonna be ones that you've probably never heard before. And just like all my videos, anything and everything I talk about will be linked in my description. This first tip is something that I just don't hear a lot of people talk about, but it made a tremendous impact on helping Wally stay asleep. <laughs> Look at him. Stay asleep for longer when he was crate training, potty training, and I will be talking about some crate and potty training tips at the end. And this is to manage the sound in whatever room your puppy is sleeping in. I'll talk about where I have puppy sleep in just a moment. With Wally, we used a sound machine. And what this is, this is actually one specifically for humans. Again, it'll be linked below, it's called the snooze. But the reason I like this one is because you can adjust the tone on the bottom because dogs are very sensitive to sound. So you can adjust it based on what works best for your puppy. But what I like about these is this is going to drown out noises that may otherwise startle or wake up your puppy. Anything from somebody closing a car door to a barking dog down the street. In addition to that, a white noise machine which you could use ones for babies, they make ones for puppies. I personally like this one because it helps me sleep. Uh, and I like it because it comes with an app, you can put a timer on it, you can adjust the level, the sound, everything, it's awesome. But I also like it because if you think about a young puppy that's just come from its mom and its family, it's used to hearing the heartbeat and the breathing of his or her mom. So I love having something like this just to kind of set the tone. And on that note, a second tip is sticking to a routine. This is something I'm sure you've heard of, but really sticking to a routine where you're not giving your puppy too much water right before bed or too many treats or food right before bed. And on that note of routine, I really try to avoid allowing puppies take a nap within one to up to three hours before bedtime. And that can be tough because in the evening, you're tired, they're usually tired from playing a lot throughout the day, and it's easy to just wanna snuggle up, watch some Netflix, and cuddle with them and let them doze off. It kinda gives you a little bit of a break. So one of the ways I love keeping them awake is by playing with them with some toys. Giving them new and different toys is really key to helping them develop, build confidence, and have mental stimulation and enrichment. Here's the key, it can be dangerous to give your puppy too much physical exercise as they're growing in development because their joints are loosey-goosey and they can be more prone to injury. So what do we do to get them tired out so they sleep longer at night? Well, we can play with toys with them. And so I do wanna show some of the toys that we have been having for Wally for probably the past year, almost his entire life. Uh, this is BarkBox and Super Chewer, Super Chewer being for the more Super Chewer dogs and puppies and then BarkBox being the more traditional fluff and plush toys and uh, big thanks to BarkBox and Super Chewer for sponsoring this part of the video and supporting our mission to save all the damn dogs. And I just wanna do a quick unboxing cause I am obsessed. If you sign up, you can get a free dog bed, which is great because it has a removable washable cover. Great for puppies that might have accidents. They come with a variety of sizes and colors. So this is the Super Chewer that Wally's very excited about. Comes every single month and it's custom to your dog's size and chew need. Um, this theme this month is this Madagascar, and it comes with this really cool chameleon. Oh, good, yeah, you want that one? Um, this one I'm super excited about. So it's a little lemur. So there's this little kind of hard uh, head there. It's like a chew or a ball. And then it has this fun little tail for tongue. And then probably my favorite, Bobby the Beetle. You see that? So this is like a hard chew slash ball. But what I love about it, other than the fact that it's adorable, is it has these rounded edges on it. Can you sit? Yes, good boy. And so when you bounce it and you're playing fetch, it bounces in erratic ways. So it keeps your dog or puppy really engaged and excited. There you go, good job. And what's cool is when you have a puppy, you can get the smaller sizes. And when they grow, you can upgrade their size to the bigger one. And then for the Bark Box, which are the more traditional plush toys, again, the same Madagascar theme. This is the Tenric. It's kind of like a hedgehog. And look at this, it's so fun. Oh, he liked that. And inside of it, <laughs> is a nice squeaker. As you can hear, there's crinklies. 
which is great for different textures, different sounds. You also have this cute little guy here. It's a little plush lemur. And I love that it has the crinklies in here. It has a lot of different parts that the puppy can play with. Um, and then of course you have the chameleon. I'm obsessed and one easy brain game you can do is take your dog or your puppy's bark box, fill it up with some of their favorite uh, treats or you can fill it up with their kibble if they're eating a dry food. Stack the toys on top and then have your puppy dig out the toys. This helps them build their confidence because sticking their head inside of a box can be challenging for a puppy. So it's a great way for them to be more socialized. There you go. And you see how he will kind of put his head in there. This is a great, great activity for your dog to mentally stimulate and enrich them. Another tip to help your puppy sleep for longer is making sure that the temperature in the room is appropriate. You know, it may be warm enough or cool enough for you, but if your puppy is really struggling with staying asleep or even falling asleep or calming down, they could be too hot or too cold. And we learned that the hard way with Wally. Look at him chewing it, you getting it. I'll take the tag off for you. Because he, for a while, I was doing everything I talk about in these videos, right? Um, I was taking him out regularly. For those of you who have not seen my proactive potty training video, y'all need to check the description below after this video or I'll talk about it at the end and we'll go through that together. But the gist of it is proactively taking your puppy out when they're really young every 60 minutes or so. Depending on their bladder size, it could be every two hours. But the key is to do it regularly and consistently to avoid them having a sudden urgent need to go potty. Because what happens is when your puppy starts screaming and crying in the middle of the night that they need to go potty, if you don't get there quick enough, you're at risk to have an accident. And the more your puppy practices, even on accident, going potty in their crate that they're sleeping in or their playpen, the more likely they're going to repeat that behavior. So that's something we really want to avoid. Here you go. Is this a chameleon? I love the different texture on this as well. Can you see that? That's so cool. Great for teething puppies. Oh, get it, get it, get it. Get it. You want your chameleon? I love that color. And so one thing we learned with Wally is he wasn't settling down and we finally realized it was summertime he might be hot. So my mom took the fan in her room and she blew it to where it only covered half of his crate so he wouldn't be forced to have the air blowing in his face just to see how it did. We turned the temperature in the house. We had it at 71. We turned it down to 70, like just one degree within 30 minutes. He slept for four hours straight. It was the longest he had ever slept. He was just a little guy. It was a game changer and we realized he was a little hot. When your puppy is whining or crying or doing a behavior that you don't love, it's not because they're trying to act out, it's because they need something or they want something. So take a step back if your puppy's doing something you don't love and try to assess, uh, are they mentally stimulated enough? Are they stressed? Are they bored? Are they overstimulated? If you have a puppy that's super bitey or super nippy, um, I'll talk about puppy biting at the end of this video in depth, but one easy tip is if you notice that they're just getting like overly intense when it comes to kind of chomping down on your legs or your pants, take a moment and reflect. When was the last time your puppy had downtime where they could nap or self-soothe or relax in a playpen or crate or somewhere uh, away from all the chaos of the house? Puppies are like toddlers in that if they get overstimulated, they haven't always learned how to self-soothe, which means that they can act out act out, right, uh, by biting or jumping or barking or chewing on things they shouldn't. So sometimes giving our puppies a nap time earlier in the day or just kind of alone time to decompress can be really helpful. On the note of nap time, one thing we also did with Wally when he was a puppy was make a lot of noise all the time. And not anything extreme, I wouldn't be blaring music, but you better believe that when he was napping, because puppies can sleep up to like 15 to 18 hours a day, sometimes a little more, they sleep a lot. And so a lot of times it can be natural or, or instinct to tip around or tiptoe around so we don't wake them up. We did the opposite. We ran the dishwasher. We uh, turned the mower on in the backyard. We ran the vacuum. We ran the robot. We would run the mop. We would unload the dishwasher. Um, we would open the front door. We'd have the doorbell ring. And that really helped at nighttime because during the night, if there was something like a noise or I have to get up to go to the restroom or I drop something or whatever it might be, um, he was less likely to be startled, startled and woken up. You get it. Yeah, you love it. You 
love this. Let me take the tag off. Another thing you can do to help your puppy sleep for longer is to help them reduce the discomfort and pain from teething. Uh, an easy way to do that is you could take a raw, like a large raw carrot. It's something that Wally loved as a puppy, still does and we gave him a big one, and he would just gnaw on it and chew on it an hour and a half or so before bed. He didn't really swallow a ton of the pieces. If he did, I didn't care. It just helped bulk up his stool a little bit, and it worked great for Wally. Um, but the act of chewing on that helped massage his gums. It helped activate his jaw muscles, which is tiring both mentally and physically for a dog. So it soothes them and calms them, but it really helps take care of the discomfort in their teeth. A pro tip to that is freeze your carrot. Wally loved a frozen carrot frozen squash, uh, frozen fruit to kind of chew on and gnaw on. He just went crazy for it. And it took him a few tries in the beginning, but he really took to that and it became one of the nightly routines for him to settle down. The act of biting down and chewing on things is actually a way that dogs self-soothe in many situations. I have more of my favorite puppy chews and just general chews for dogs because I'm very picky about the chews, treats, and even food that I give my dogs. I'll link to my description on my shop page below for you. Now I wanna talk more about puppy biting. Click the video right here and we'll jump over there and I'll show you my hacks that have worked wonders. Or if you want to learn more about potty training, that my potty training video that has helped millions of people, click the video right here. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.